Hey y'all, it's Rashida here. And thank you for tuning into the season finale of Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. This season has been one of the wildest ones yet, even for me, child. We appreciate you, the audience, for always sticking beside us through the good, the bad, the ugly, and of course, the messy. You saw and heard all of it, even Minna's use of a racial slur. For her to blurt that out the spice like she did, it was hurtful. We all know right from right and wrong from wrong. And for a person to say those things repeatedly and then turn around and act as though it wasn't anything is what really bothered me the most. We've been fighting for so many years, you guys, just to be treated as equal. And at this point, I think it's a great time to have a great conversation. As a leading platform in popular culture, we have a responsibility to you, our audience. What you're about to watch is a round table anchored by Dr. Sarah Webb, founder and owner of Colorism Healing, alongside a few of my cast members. Unfortunately, I couldn't be present for this important round table, but I am extremely happy that we're making this happen. So please take a moment to watch, listen, and hopefully learn what has been an important moment for Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. Welcome everyone. We are here with some of the cast of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta for a candid conversation about the controversial events leading up to the season 11 finale. I am Dr. Sarah L. Webb, the founder of Colorism Healing, which is a global initiative designed to raise awareness, shift attitudes, and take action to dismantle colorism around the globe. The use of racial slurs against a cast member on season 11 has sparked debate and controversy across across the internet. MTV thought it was important for some of the cast to continue their conversation as well. We have Yandy, <laughs> Spice, Jack, Scrappy, What's happening? Amy, Amy, and Sierra. Hey. Yes. First, I want to talk about bias and prejudice. This is what people most often talk about in these kind of conversations. So anyone can have a bias or a prejudice, where it's the belief that a group of people is inherently better or inferior than another group, right? Solely based on their race or gender or ethnicity, right? But when we're talking about racism and colorism, we're talking about social systems that go far beyond an individual person's attitudes or opinions. And racism and colorism are about power. So when we have something like colonialism, Europeans, white people, white identified people wanted to hoard economic power political power and social power, right? And so racism is about the system that pushes white people to the top of that power hierarchy. Colorism is a system in which even amongst us as people of color, those with the lightest skin tones wow. get more preferential treatment and are propped up in society above those with darker skin tones, mm -hmm. all right? And let's talk about Atlanta, the setting of all of this. Atlanta is the mecca of black culture. Atlanta has a long history, generations of civil rights movements, of protests, right, of sit-ins. And so I'm wondering if you think that the location of where this conversation is happening makes it that much more pertinent. In Atlanta, for example, over the past recent years, we've had the deaths of people like Ahmaud Arbery, yes. Rayshard Brooks. Yep. And so your thoughts being local to this city, how does this setting of Atlanta really make this conversation that much more significant? It's a black city, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, as long as I don't been living, you know, I don't always been through some kind of racism. So like the Confederate flag is still a thing in Atlanta and that's something that bothers me so bad. Like it irks my nerve. I think I was like uh, first grade and my grandma taught at school. She taught uh, at this school, Rock Bridge Elementary. Oh, wow. Now, this was predominantly white. Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen all these white people before. And yeah. It's a total no, it's change. Like, I went to school in Cunyas, Georgia. My bus driver was, and Cunyas is mostly white. My bus driver would leave me almost every morning. What? <laughs> Just leave me. What Just, do you mean? Like, you you reach late, Sierra. No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. I was, 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 I
Y'all, listen, <laughs> my house was right in front of the school bus. <laughs> the bus would come, they would open the door, the little white kids would get on the bus, and I'd come out of my house, you know, walking out. Maybe I was walking, but she seen me, yeah. and she would just pull off. <laughs> they was with me. They were. <laughs> they uh, were, right? So, so what you're talking about is what people call microaggressions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where you're not using the N-word against me. You right. know, you're not calling oh, me names. Thank you. Not yes. explicitly. Thank you. But your you're actions. doing things. Your right. actions yeah. are, are trying to put me in a Thank degrading you. position they to would, say Because you she would let all the... They, she would like, come on. The bright kids would just jump on the bus, and I would come out there with my little book bag, and honey, she would just pull off and slam it. I'm like, dang. She's like, they're a little black girl. Yeah. Let go. <laughs> and and those are those are different things that I remember like growing up in a, in Atlanta. I think moving here because I'm from Harlem, another mecca of black culture and creativity. I came with a you know what? I think I want to open up a restaurant. I want to open up a skincare store. I was able to own these different properties, but once it comes down to permitting, I have someone that is white that works on my team sending her in to wow. get things yep. done. Yep. It's yep. better yep. easier. So much get used quicker to get used to than it. me doing it. Although yeah. this is the mecca of, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. black opportunities, resources. So I don't I think racism is everywhere. I think yeah. the structural power is all over the United States. I mean I'm saying the United States because that's where I'm from, mm -hmm. but I think it's embedded in systems no matter how much the state or the city appreciates what black people brings, how right. much they idolize what we bring, yeah. how much they love our culture, yeah. I don't think it's any different. The black we actually support, we spend the money. It's like, okay, I'm gonna let y'all spend the money, but I'm not gonna give y'all that real respect. I walk into the bank and I'm not respected mm. at all. Yeah until they log into my account. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. see, <laughs> yeah, but I see, you know, a, a other race stand next to me and they greet it, how are you doing? And it's just, they looking at it, I don't get that respect. So you always say that even when black people advance economically, we don't escape racism. We right. don't escape yeah, it. Yeah. And then you think about history as of like the Tulsa massacre, mm, right? Yeah. The race riots in Springfield, Illinois. Sometimes you black become Wall more of a target yeah. mm -hmm. the more yeah. success you have as a black yep. person. Yeah. yeah. That's 24 7. Yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah. When I was selling one of my properties, my agent was like, you should kind of take some of this art down. You don't really want them to know the mm. race of the house owner. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should change these pillows and these. And I was just sitting there thinking, yeah. it didn't make sense. You know, yeah. I actually had a white person come in to set it up like it was hers. I felt like I saw a almost overnight yeah. thing. It was my first time being like, dang, it's everywhere. I call it small city, big money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ran by the whites. Mm. I didn't get a chance to graduate high school, and I had a Caucasian lady tell me I was going to be on welfare for the rest of my life. And I looked at her like, <laughs> Who are you? Like, you, uh, you're you not God. But <laughs> we need conversations like this to shake up the community, to let them know, like, they can do it. That's why it's so important for me to use my voice. I feel like God put me on television not to be cute. Well, to look cute and wear my hair and stuff, but to actually open my mouth and say what needs to be said to the little girls that's looking up to me. Yeah. And what about colorism? Have any of you seen it or experienced it? Well, I actually did a project on colorism on, in 2018 where I had to use makeup to make it seem like I had bleached my skin mm -hmm. to appear lighter. And so I went on a protest and I did a whole light face. I think everybody at the table had a yeah. glimpse of it. <laughs> and it was just my way of protesting to say, do I have to look like this mm -hmm. to be more appreciated? When I did a song called Black Hypocrisy, mm -hmm. because I feel like there's a lot of hypocrisy within our black community when it mm -hmm. comes on to colorism mm -hmm. as well. But as a darker skinned black woman, mm -hmm. I sadly have experience racism and colorism yes. majority of my life. I experienced it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, um, yeah, man. You remember when I pressed my hair? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That's oh, a part yeah. of colorism. Nah, because see, nah, see, no, Chris, yes. cause look, Chris Brown did it. Yeah, uh huh. He didn't catch okay. the flat. Miguel did, Miguel did it. Oh, yeah. 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 Lighter. They, they lighter than you. Lighter. <laughs> then when I did it, it's cool when they do it, but it's a problem when we do it. 
<laughs> That's but no, real. But, but what, it, what it was is they was they felt like the lighter complexion hair. And then there's like the that. singers, and that's and that looked like I'm trying mm-hmm. to look more yeah. like them. Mm-hmm. And it's easily accepted because of their complexion already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know what? I always thought that like men didn't get it as bad as women, because I got it. And I feel like I'm in the middle. You know, women love a chocolate man. You know, I didn't know. So but 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 I'm I'm mean, but yeah, when it comes to relationships, probably, but what I've noticed um with, with brown and skin men, they are more likely to get pulled over by the cops. Yeah. Oh yeah. They are more likely yeah. to be found guilty before they're even trying to be proven guilty. Guilty by complexion. Guilty Guilty by complexion. I think when it comes to society forms, like, it's very hard for black men. I think even sometimes darker skin, even sometimes harder than it is for us um, when it comes to society, getting a job, walking in to, you know, to a restaurant, walking walking into a a store, walking into a bank. Trying to get a house. Trying to get a house. house. We want to zoom in a little bit to the incident that, you know, incited this round table where Erica Mena used a racial slur against Spice. Oh my God, I wouldn't know what would happen to me if something happens to Spice. And I said, well, damn, I was your wife pregnant. Almost lost my life and our baby in a really dark time. I was in the hospital, which the whole world saw. But why did you feel the need to compare us, though? Because at the time, Anyone you, you would have. And why? Why would you compare? You're strange that he felt that wife. way. I was his wife. And he felt nothing. That don't have nothing to do with me if he felt nothing for you. Like, so it's just confusing. So you're like, telling why? me, if you, you know, were in my shoes, you're telling me you wouldn't feel no type of way as a woman? What do you mean if I was in your shoes? In what if way? What you, do you mean? If, because if I feel you like your me. problem is, Erica, you feel like you're the first woman to be divorced. That's the problem. Really? I feel like you're acting like you're the first woman to be divorced, and you're the first woman that's left with two children mm. to fend for. I've been doing it for 14 years. Welcome to the club. Girl, your I've kids been doing are it for nowhere. 16. Okay? 16. Okay, with 16 your son that don't teenager. like you. It makes it. my head hurt and my blood boil. Mm. Like the audacity to be so immersed in our culture, love our men, mm. want love the black black penis. children, proud of it, but can sit there and call a black person, not just a black woman, a monkey, make monkey gestures, make monkey sounds. That's exactly what I want to talk about is the history of that word, why it's so painful, why it's so hurtful. And I also want to give Spice a chance to react yeah. to that because I saw that you were very emotional just having to replay that. I done read in books, you know what I'm saying? I done seen it where they done put like real, like a human being, a black human being in a zoo and chained them up and treated them just like a monkey. Mm. And dressed them up and everything, had people come pay to just look at them. When that, something like that is said and like the way she said it, that's all I can think about. I wanted to calm down first to kind of get over the situation. But I also want to take this opportunity to just educate because I feel like a lot of our black people, they do not know yes. the depth. Yes. 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 And so even sometimes when I see the comments, I know that it's coming from an ignorant place, and I know that it's coming from a place where they themselves do not understand that our ancestors died, fought for our freedom, for our rights, to even be here to have a voice. When I heard what happened from Rashida, I was taken aback at first when Rashida said, you know, 
her child was mentioned, so she reacted, and I was like, you know, I had to be real, I'm a flawed human being. And I remember when my child was mentioned on a reunion show, I got up and I was ready to fight. Then my next reaction was, but, but why you went to a racial slur? Mm. And then I started to think, like, Dag, is she a racist? Like, what's that about? And I'm like, I gotta talk to her. I don't think she's a racist. Like, I've spoken to her. So my first reaction was, nah, she's not a racist. She doesn't know what that term means. Mm -hmm. She's not educated about the violence that has for our community. I know that she doesn't know what this means for our history and our people. I want to be in the space where Yandy is and say she don't know that, but I'm not going. Because I know she's culturally aware. Mm -hmm. Too immersed in our culture to not know. Because if you tell me you don't know, I'm gonna look at you sideways because you know too much more about you too much other stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't have what my father would say, convenient amnesia. Mm -hmm. You use it conveniently, oh, I didn't know. No, you knew. You know. And when I know that you know, it's a slap in the face to pretend as if you don't. I ain't never had seen it. Like, how you, I ain't never had I seen it. I didn't either, because so I was, I did I was my coming little, from a different place. So when I seen the little uh, thing saying, oh, they done fired and stuff like that. Because your first lie was kind, I was like, we all were. Say? I said, but then you came back after this? he re he did his no. research and educated on the no, I was no, so mad I about had... that live. We actually have clips of your live stream. I feel about Eric getting fired. I don't know if that's real. I don't know if that's real. I mean, I think that's pretty bozo for them to fire mm -hmm. somebody. I don't mean I don't know Eric at all. Like at all. They can fire me. They know that. Uh-uh. I, I was drunk. Yeah, so I, I was, was drunk. drunk. I was, you said I was drunk. When you said that, I said this. So I did not mean the words that I said. I did not know the gravity. <laughs> the gravity? And the words. That called to was coming out of my mouth. Damn. OK, let's watch the other one. He went to a whole nother location, though. Changed his T-shirt. Started drinking some water. Music ain't behind him. Erica Mena was wrong. <laughs> Was wrong. He said, Erica, Erica Mena was, was wrong. wrong. <laughs> whatever, you know what I'm saying? The colorism is real. Yeah. We do know that. Racism is real. We do know that. See, what had happened was well, I ain't had seen it. So I'm like, but I've never seen uh, it. So, so, I'm, like look, no, so I'm, I'm looking at it like they two women, they probably just was, ah, you know what I'm saying? It just was like that. But then when I seen it, I was like, wow, nah, like the way she said it, it was like real, like. Mm, intentional and deliberate. It, it came like, from the gut. It came from the gut, like. It came from the core. I'm talking about like. That's what, that's what made me change <laughs> when I when I seen it. I'm like, ooh, well, I was said like. He, he, and I, uh -huh. I, I was, was like, Whoa. Yeah, because I've been really quiet. Not really. I told her how I felt about it. I told her I was like, you wrong. The term monkey was systematically used to dehumanize the whole black race. Mm. It was shocking coming from someone that I know, but I have received racism almost all my life. So being in a racism situation is not new to me. However, um, since I'm the one in the hot seat and the whole situation stirred from me and her having a discussion, I vividly want to point out and make sure that Everyone is aware that I did not come for her child. A lot of people are saying, you brought up the child or whatever it is. She brought up her own son. And so when she brought up her son, I replied and said to the son that doesn't like you because I wanted to be clear. Some people were saying they feel like I should be fired too for coming for Erica parenting. Mm -hmm. On Love and Hip Hop show itself and its franchise, there's so many different occasions where people came for Parenting. People's parenting. As we all do, and you right? feel like you, I As said it as on, always it does. Yeah, yeah I came, came for her parenting. parenting too. When I you're wrote. a wife, why they can't ride for you? I wrote. So is that why you don't want to pay child support? Oh, oh my God. Yes. Hey, what about your son? That's girl? the what truth. About your son? What, what about, about my son? son? What your about my son? son? You're acting you know like you know son? something. Because yeah. I know so much about your son. Crap, you watch for this. You watch for this. A lot of people came for her parenting on Love and Hip Hop. Let's be very clear now. She chose to call me a monkey, and that Scrappy will ask her, where's your son, when she decides Oh, Scrappy is a dead beast. Scrappy was like, listen, let me worry about mine. Where's your son? Scrappy did not become a monkey. Yeah. My whole takeaway is tying back to the color of my skin makes me seem like, oh, the aggressor or whatever. Because I'm of a darker skin tone, they painted me now to be the angry black woman. I can take full accountability for coming for her parenting. Her reply could have been a million other words that's in her vocabulary. 
why a racial slur? She decided to go the racism route. Mm -hmm. When I received that racism from someone that I know, it, it was a shocker. So for someone to say it to your face, you're like, oh my God, mm. this is who she are. I feel like I left that situation the winner because I revealed a racist. Mm. And I don't mm. care what nobody uh. else want to say. A racist was revealed. Mm. Mm. So 400 years ago, our slave masters would call us monkeys to categorize us, mm -hmm. to make to dehumanize us. Mm -hmm. Less than a human. To, so it was a tactic to justify yes. racism. Mm -hmm. So it was a tactic used to justify racism to make us seem as we're pre primates. Primate, yeah. yeah. And so this is a deeply rooted slur that has nothing to do with me. It goes history way. Attached. The history, the burden, mm -hmm. the blood, mm -hmm. the, the, blood. The, 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 the slashes. Mm -hmm. the blood, girl. The tears and the fights and everything is attached to this word. Yeah. I went to Ghana and I went to the slave dungeons. When I say the realization of how they thought we did not matter, we were less than humans, mm -hmm. we were people that needed to be in captivity, that needed to be chained by our ankles, chained by our hands. Mm -hmm. And even being, when I, when I stood in that slave dungeon, when you walk from the, the outside of the dungeon to the inside of the dungeon, you can feel like the stickiness of the bottom of the floor. And I remember asking, why does the floor feel like this? It felt waxy and sticky. And they said, that is the remains of your ancestors that did not make it. Yes. It wasn't about looking and dehumanizing to make you feel like an animal. In that moment, you were less than the animal. We don't even yes. treat dogs like that. Yes. yes. When they fed us in the slave dungeons, they would throw pieces of bread and meat through a little hole. And literally, the 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 only the survival, the stronger ones could get to the food. So you had to literally step on people. Like come on, step on. No, like the crab in a barrel. That's where there's so much about this society. There's, there's so much there's about the way we are. That's that in that word. into who we it's are. We are that yeah. started 400 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like we had to climb on top of each other's back yeah. to get the food that they dropped down at the slave dungeons. So the weak ones, they didn't eat. The weak ones died. And then guess what? We're stepping on them. We're stepping, We're stepping on, on, them. on them. I went to one in Calabar. It was, yeah, I want to read a touching. quote by oh. Thomas Jefferson. Mm. So the person on your currency said this, the first difference which strikes us is that of color. Mm. Okay, so notice how he nitpicks the features, mm -hmm. right? And is this difference of no importance? Is it not the foundation of a greater or less share of beauty in the two races? Mm. Add to these flowing hair, a more elegant symmetry of form, their own judgment in favor of the whites declared by their preference of them, as uniformly as the preference for the orangutan for the black woman over those of his own species. The circumstances of superior beauty is thought worthy attention in the propagation of our horses, dogs, and other domestic animals. Why not in that of man? Besides those of color, figure, and hair, there are other physical distinctions proving a difference of race. Okay, and so this is what one of the founding fathers of this country, this is the ideology, the narrative, right, that, that we now know our lies, mm -hmm. but that was belief taken as fact that is what this country was founded on, right? And so when we talk about why these words matter, and when we talk about racism versus colorism, we see that those things are intimately intertwined. Yep, Where I, I call racism it. and colorism like fire and smoke. Where there's one, you're going to see the other. They're not the same thing, but they always like to tag team, right? So here he's talking about how do we know that there's a difference in race? Well, let's start by looking at color, right? Let's start by looking at the hair. Me, uh, I'm black, but I have nieces and nephews who are half Puerto Rican and half black. And the black women come up and say, is this your nephew? Is this your niece? They're so pretty. And they only say it to my half Puerto Rican nieces. It just made my blood boil so bad because from an ump perspective, I looked at my nieces, the full black ones that look like me, and they are just standing there because she's used to her little sister getting the praise. And I told the black lady, I said, you don't see all my black nieces mm -hmm. here? They're all beautiful. She's like, yes, they are. And I'm looking at her like, what is wrong? What is, how can we fix this? Yeah. This was a black woman, though. It's 
so deep to the self-hatred that they instilled mm. in us to feeling like lighter is brighter. Mm. Or it's more better. Beautiful. Yeah. So do you all think that what happened with Erica Mena was an instance of racism or colorism or both? What are your thoughts both. on that? Whoa. I think she has been told, I don't know her personally, but I know from experience that I think that she has been told her entire life that you look better than black women, feature wise, your hair is better, your skin is better. It's a thing. When you're allowed into a culture, you're allowed to live amongst the culture, say the same breathe thing. it. And camouflage oh, in. Respect the and culture. Right, 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 right. Respect but listen, but somewhere in there, when you start feeling Superior? You're yes. Not necessarily okay. superior. But it's because you come around us. It's feel that like, way. No, it you, is you, the word. You, you, it's because when you said camouflage, it's kind of like you camouflage in. I'm like you almost like, you know. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. yeah. I'm a minority too. Mm -hmm. yeah. she That's said what she that, said. Right? Yeah. On the colorism side or the concept of what people may feel preference may be, when it comes to black men, a lot of cats is always using that term. I want something far, and I want this and that. A Spanish chick or red. I want something red. Start, it will make somebody feel like they are they better. Better yeah. because y your man is sitting here putting. It's yeah. in the song. Listen to the music. Listen yeah. to the songs. So somewhere in there, you got to when you use the term systemic. It's not always just coming from an outside source. No, that's, it'd be, it'd that's, be, it'd that's be, adding to yeah, the whole systemic sure. breakdown. But this is the thing. Nowhere in our culture, if I sit at a table with you, if I sit at a culture and I'm across from people of Hispanic background, we might say to each other, child, please. Like, huh? and, and it's accepted amongst us. Even if you're immersed in black yeah. culture, yes. that is accepted to yeah. a certain extent. Yes. Yeah. We ain't never, ever be like, ha, 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 monkey, please. We don't do that. That is not something that's accepted in our culture, whether you're so is not as bad. The reason it, it doesn't have the same implications if I said because we've we've gotten to a place and it doesn't have the same we've implications. We've gotten to a place. I don't give a damn. What so <laughs> what Yandy is trying to say is that regardless of whether you think the N word is bad or not, it is accepted as a part of black culture. Yeah, the word monkey has never has been never been accepted. Never been. We've never found that so on so, 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 never so, hold on. Never so let me accepted. let me finish the point. So what you were saying about you know non-black people who are a part of the culture who are accepted into the culture, you they can't claim that. You can't yeah. for why no. they use the term. No, because no. we don't play like that. It shouldn't be allowed in no kind of but way. But there are blurred lines. In no kind. Of, it ain't there to me. Blurred, it is. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, but you got to you got to think though. In the past, it wasn't. You go back. It one blur. It was this what it is, you who you is, and I'm who I am, and you keep that some kind of way, they blurred it. I, it went I'm not gonna like lie. That. I didn't it know it was blurred like until I went to New York. When I went to New York, that's the, cause the people, the, the different race in Atlanta can't say yeah, around us. Yeah, yeah. But when I went that. to New York and I was like, how yeah. are you saying it? Yeah. But th we grew like up, it, see, it, I grew it. up amongst Latinas, Latinos, yeah. and, and that is something that we blurred a lot. But even in that, but right? See, we just if you're around white. different, yeah. But if, if you come and you're a different nationality, or you're a different race, and you say that word to a different group of people that ain't used to, you come to Atlanta and you Puerto Rican, and you be like, please, they might not receive you. You've crossed also, the line with them. But also, I want to acknowledge your perspective, Scrappy, because if we're making the argument that the historical harm of a word means it's off limits then that's where your argument is coming from, right? Yeah. So just like the word monkey is off limits because of that historical harm, the degradation and the yeah. violence yeah. that it led to, yeah. the N-word has also caused yeah. the same degradation. I thought they supposed to be home, equal. Right? No, they ain't. Oh, excuse my language. No, 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 no way. They're 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 they are. No, I feel like I feel like a racial yeah. slur. Yeah. I ja, I you feel like they're the same. Yeah. Anybody would okay, say the no. N-word and the monkey it's not the same. because it was used to categorize us as slaves. Then there, the I, I feel like a, I feel like a racial slur yeah. is just a racial yeah. slur. And so that's the I question like too. If we, if we, if we let certain things slide, do we then say, oh well, if you let that slip, then why not let the word monkey slip, right? And so maybe we do gatekeep the culture a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so oh. we also have the element of the color blue and purple colors. Like even when we call, use the word black as an insult, yeah. right? So we're talking, oh, black pride. We're so proud to be black. I love being black. And yet how often have we heard growing up 
and even to this day, black being used as an insult, mm -hmm. all right? All the time, yep. yeah. Sit your black all self down. All the time, all the time. I've heard Ooh, it all you, my you, life. You so black, my you disappear when Blackie. they turn the lights mm -hmm. on. My nickname growing up as a child was Blackie. My complexion is not an insult. I'm proud of who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm a beautiful woman. Yep. And I hate when people say, oh, you're so pretty for a black girl. Oh, Take the word I black out of it. <laughs> I'm a beautiful woman, and I'm proud of who I am. Like me say, I'm proud I'm a color, i am bleach for each. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. the complexion that I have has always been a target, as they think, to use to insult me. Erica, she said, I have black children and I have that black doesn't make and I have a black husband. That, that doesn't, doesn't make, mean, mean anything. that you're not racist and it okay. doesn't mean that you're not a colorist. So I think sometimes people, that's the go-to for someone that is a racist. I got black friends, how can I be a racist? You, you can be a racist. Like but black, a black person, <laughs> yes. it doesn't mean that you won't, You're a black person. You won't use your power yep. to degrade the race. And sometimes people get mixed up with fetish, black fetish. That's what... And, and, and also, I like the fact that my babies will be brown-skinned. Yes. Right. They go to tanning salons all the time to be brown That does anyway. not mean you are not racist. But, hold on, but hold on. They don't want them too black, though. They don't want them right. to come out too black. Right. right. But they'll, they'll go in the tanning salon and the sprays and get too black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time. They'll even braid their hair with coarse, thick... You know, and it, it goes from from not just wanting and, and fetishizing our culture, then it's cultural appropriation, yeah. where it's like, you know, I did it, I created the cornrows, and, and now it's right, now it's great. When we are told, you can't come to work like that, but when another ethnicity of, yes. of you know, superiority okay. or more power, right. it's more appealing, now it's acceptable. Yay. So I got a question. Oh my yes. God. I got a question. So what is it called when, when, when black women walk around with this fresh, with this, Straight hair or these, you know. Because I can humans. change. I can change it's the way. Fashion. Yeah, it's, it's a hat on like y'all tattoos. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I think it's so different. Not a pro it's, it's, it depends on how the person is using it. Some black women do not love themselves the way they are, and I can take for example, not every black woman would proudly wear their natural hair mm -hmm. like this beautiful woman sitting right here because they have a lot of self-hate. Mm -hmm. They don't love themselves yep. enough to wear their natural hair. So they feel like the add-ons and the thing makes them look better or whatever the because case may society be. society showed Why them that the kinky hair ain't I've pretty. I've seen take her wig off and go around with her natural hair. Mm -hmm. I take my wig off all the time. I'm just always performing. I like mine's blue, yeah. so I'm a... That's the persona that I, that I created as Spice, but I love myself in my natural mm -hmm. form. Yeah, Spice, do you feel like that's a self-hate or what the society made right. them feel? There are women who feel society that way. Society will make you feel that way because in Jamaica, for example, where I come from, or everywhere people yeah. bleach their skin and alter their appearance. But it's so that, so that's the answer to Jock's question, though, Yes. And why, you know, when black women that's wear their hair straight, it's different than yes. when people who are not black wear our hairstyles and act like they invented it, right? Because they're doing it because, oh, it's trendy. Oh, it's yes. cute. I can be popular. I can come up, right? Black women have done it historically because it was the only way to get hired because people would not treat us fairly Is because of the discrimination. To that, to that yeah. way? And, yes. So the, the Crown Act, so they, they oh, yeah. actually had to pass policies so that black women and all black people, to be honest, don't face hair discrimination at work. Mm -hmm. so don't that. get fired or get suspended from school or sent wow. or told they can't walk across yep. the stage or for participate in a wrestling match because they have locks or because they have natural hair, so, right? So, and so white people have never faced that discrimination yeah. regardless of how they wear their hair. Yeah, they do that in black schools. Because I be, yes, I be, I be right? when I hear yeah. life's crazy, like when I see a, a beautiful black woman, right, of color, okay, and then I look around and then it's past the, 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 the hair. Now you're contouring y'all noses to look like you're more European. And I'll yeah. be lost yeah. with that a little bit. I ain't yeah. gonna kick it. Yeah. Let me get directly to it, because we, I feel like we internalize racism as well. Mm -hmm. If I did not come here with this hair that does not belong to me, and I wore my natural hair, my same people, the black people, would comment so negatively yes. about me. Why she couldn't do her hair? This is so true. Why she couldn't fix up herself? Why she never cream out her? The black man is sitting here saying, yo, mm -hmm. I want this complexion. I want this foreign chick. Then y'all sitting here 
And I'm not, don't, please don't beat me up, y'all. But y'all are sitting here every day, you embellishing yourself to look closer to that, what your man is saying he won't. So when the woman who got these things your man say he won't, she's getting put in these videos, she's getting the front seat for the look. Mm -hmm. Naturally, do you think she's going to feel like she looks better or is but more superior she does. than you? You let people into your culture so much. And they start looking at everything you got going on, and they start realizing, like, what they trying to look like they, they trying to look like, they look like us. I think with the lip yeah, injections, like with the tans, us. I think when you immerse with a culture that you black. love so much, no, no you know. because you got to yeah, understand. Yeah, it's just like they do like this. These girls are trying to look like us. Okay, Absolutely. I, I wanted to be, be very oh clear. God. Where in black history did we get confused that we're trying to look like that? When we look and take the original face and shape, and then I look at my auntie, my granny, my mm -hmm. mama, our slate, all of them, I'm like, you bought them lips. Not trying to look like a white woman. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the lips at the table. I'm, I'm just saying, you didn't buy those lips to look like Sarah. You yeah. bought her to look like Keisha. Yeah, but like you, I didn't buy these lips. Done, I didn't buy these lips to look Keisha like uh, Sarah. Like... I bought these lips to look like goddamn Spice and... That part. <laughs> but we have this confusion of black community that black women are trying to be European. But I'm sitting no, here saying, ain't. look at Queen Nephi, look at it. The jewelry, the hair clips, she was on the same you're tip. No, but black the women are the tip. ones with the lips. Let's be very clear. Though, like Spice has also said, is that there are black people who don't like the way they look. Yes, they there are. There are definitely yes, black yes, people who yeah. think yes. the European look is better. And the system creates that place for them to in, feel exactly. inferior as well. It, it's in, yes. So also, because we're talking about racism, that is one of the tools of racism is to try to make us hate ourselves. So when we talk about yes. low self-esteem, when we talk yes. about internalized hatred oh for God. ourselves, they purposely yep. implanted those ideas in us because yes. they knew that they could dominate us. Yeah. If, if we are fighting amongst ourselves, if it, we are hating ourselves, it's, it's easier yeah. to marginalize us. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more about the overlap or the blurring of the lines between the Latinx community, the various black communities across Ooh. the diaspora. You all have already started to touch on that mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, what's your understanding of a racial identity versus your ethnic identity, right? Because a lot of times we confuse race and ethnicity, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Race has a lot to do with your ancestry and your phenotype, whereas ethnicity takes into account your culture. And so can you be black and Puerto Rican? Are there Puerto Ricans who also identify as Absolutely. black, right? Absolutely. Because yeah. it's African Americans. Right. I mean, black Americans, white Americans, mm -hmm. you got Black Puerto Ricans. When your mama White black or your daddy black. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're black. And you then sometimes I mean? when it comes to race, people opt in or they, they opt, opt out, out yeah. right? <laughs> sometimes people say, I'm an Afro-Latina proudly. Caribbean. And then other times people uh, say, I am Puerto Caribbean. Rican and Dominican, and they do not necessarily identify with the, the African oh. side of their history. Yeah. And so where do you think that mean. comes from when people distance themselves or when people deny African ancestry or when people, even if they look crazy, black, they try to say, <laughs> oh no, I'm not black. They I'm look Puerto delusional. Where do you think that comes from? System. Yeah. yeah. System, I, I, yeah. people. Every single thing about the American society, we get paid less. The lighter you are, the more you make. Even if there are identical educational backgrounds, yeah. if two people walk in to get a job and yeah. I'm browner and you're lighter, there is a higher that percentage that you'll get more money. Yeah. If I'm driving here and you're driving there, we're both out of that of light, it's more likely for the darker person to get, get pulled, pulled over than a lighter and to be That's harassed why it's system. than anything else. So in this society, absolutely, it, it takes off a bit of pressure and Do a bit of oppression remember... to say, I'm not black. Because you get to reap the privileges and the benefits of being that other, whatever that other thing is. That's but, true. You're not hated. We're, we're a visible society. When you look at me, I can't take off my blackness. Me neither. You look at me, you're going to see that I'm black. Amen. So I got to live in it Amen. and I got to own Ooh. that and everything that comes with that. that. Comes we, know, we know it's not, it's never it's all of any group, right? It's a lot but when it becomes all. a pattern, right, then mm -hmm. we still have to address yes. it. And yes. And that brings up the idea of desirability, right? Mm -hmm. And who's considered desirable in media? You you talked about it already in the music lyrics, in the music videos, mm -hmm. right? How the lighter skin girls are the racially ambiguous girls. One was the lighter skin tones, the, the wavy yeah. hair, are seen as the love interest, are yeah. seen as the ones that all the guys are falling in love yeah. with and chasing. Not and me, sometimes... Though. You don't even see dark skin. I, 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 I see, I see, I see a lot of brown skin. It is changing. I have a light complexion. My baby girl is light. And I, I feel like it's... 
I have seen some light, lighter complexion women be like, well, dark skinned women get this. They they get this right here. They be they look at us and be like, oh, we we too light or something like that. But it's like still we... because of how we were raised, though, yeah. in some type of way. Because some of us, so much of us here of color is at the table when we speak on colorism. Light skinned people also receive. Yes. Colorism, yes. and I feel like that's something we also need to point out, and not just make it seem like it's just You're us. Right. I have light skin friends who have also received colorism. So I, I, I have to chime yes. in here. If someone is prejudiced against a light skinned woman, does that equal a social system, and where that light skinned woman is demeaned or degraded, placed beneath darker skinned people? No. No. Right. No. Like and so it, it, those women are still not systemically no. placed yes. beneath no. darker skin women. No, they're, they're still they're systemically not. elevated, yeah. systemically even, propped even, up. Even in my like life. you, I'm so glad you Absolutely. brought up. Absolutely. Because people don't know that yes. even within the race, even amongst black people, mm -hmm. there's income inequality. Yes. There's yes. educational inequality, yes. even amongst black Doesn't people matter, because of the But do they know it though? Right? They, do they know it though? A lot of people don't. I also have to say, in order for those lighter skinned and mulatto women to exist, they have to first rape dark skinned, yes. non mixed black women. Yes. And so all of us have uh, experienced that type of violence. Yes. All of us yes. have yes. been. So you didn't know that. No, 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 I, I didn't even think that deep. Too. Like, yes. Amy, we know that you have another engagement, so we and are I don't so appreciative leave, but... of the mm -hmm. contributions you've made to the conversation so yes. far. But yes. yes. I, I just wanted to say one thing to you, Spice. When they attack one, they attack all. Yes. It's time for us to lift up and say, hey, no. I just want to say that yes, to you. Yes, girl. Real. We love you, Amy. Yes. Yes. I love you, sis. I got you. So we left off talking about what happens when we see the harm, when we see the racial slurs, and how people are held accountable. I know, Yandy, you mentioned a moment where you tried to confront Erica and hold her accountable. We're going to take a look at that clip right now. Calling a black person a monkey? Listen, I was offended. You was offended. And, for you, and let me tell you. Because you chose to be offended, no, no, no. Andy. I was offended because you because know me. No one's going to Everybody. violate me using it's my not child. About There's violence. no boundaries Listen, at that point. Once you cross that line, a I even boundary. told her she should have died on that table. Listen, but what you said to her and what she her. said to me. When you called her a what monkey, she said to you me, insulted but every she, person no, of African descent. No. Let me explain to you guys that want to be offended by it. You think I want to be I wanted to be offended by 400 years of slavery? do. The reason why I have. Yes. Why, and, and as the thing. Uh, minorities, are we comparing ourselves to something that... The problem, Erica, this is the problem, okay. and, and that's why I want to know. That's what I don't understand. Well, let, the, and this is exactly why I wanted to have the conversation with you. I hated every single thing about that scene. And I went in there so humble, like really trying to be a friend and educate her in this moment. It was like the Montgomery brawl. When she said monkey, it was like she threw up the white hat. Like you summoned every black person in the community when you call Spice a monkey. But I wanted to educate her as to what this means for me because I went in there really thinking she just used that term unknowingly. She probably has implicit bias, but she's not a racist. And I remember, you know, Rashida and Kirk was there as well, and there was a conversation where she was trying to say, well, I did this because she insulted my mother. And then she said, and I'll do it again. The bitch crossed the line, she violated me by coming for my son, and I will do it all over the again if she does it again. It's just point blank, period. You're not gonna violate me using my kid in any type of way. So you're saying you would do, so you would say the same thing all over again? I didn't, I didn't say I would say the same thing. Oh. If I have to violate this bitch for talking about my kid, I will. Okay. okay? Rashida, me and her both just left feeling like, dang. You just gotta take full accountability exactly. for your actions. If you did wrong, just say sorry, bottom line. Well, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really agree with that either. I just feel like there's so much performative apologizing where it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for what I did, and I'm gonna but use my platform it, though, no. to, to, to racially educate, and I believe in inclusivity. Sound like a PR. It sounds like a publicist wrote yeah. that for you, and you did that because you're losing jobs or because the world has canceled you. So I'm gonna read the apology. She said, I deeply regret my insensitive comment and want to humbly apologize 
apologize to anybody I hurt or offended by my thoughtlessness. My choice of words was wrong, and I take full responsibility for what I said. I am committed to listening to the voices of those affected and will work toward making amends. As a woman of color and the mother of two black children, I want to make it clear that my use of the word was not in any way racially driven. That said, I do understand the gravity of what I said and want to use my platform to promote inclusivity and equality. So Spice, uh, as the person who received the racial slur, it's important to understand how you would have liked the situation to be handled. What does accountability look like for you? I take accountability for coming for Erica's parenting. But it doesn't sound to me like she wants to take accountability for being a racist or using a racial slur. So I can't trigger you to be a racist. You can't trigger someone to mm. be a racist. <laughs> and so mm. for the people who wants to make it seem like they want me to take accountability for Erica's choice of words, mm. I will not take accountability for that. Mm -hmm. Even in her apology, she, she did not. That. She did not say Spice now. Everybody else. <laughs> so that's you my next question. Her, like, so does and, she spice and, even in, and even in even in the apology, she said, but I'm not a racist. Or I'm not this, and I, I didn't use the, So, okay, why do you, you use the slur? What's your definition, then, mm. of using a racial slur? Do you want an apology, and do you think you're owed one? I don't. Mm. I know it's not going to come from a place of sorry. You can't just apologize because your pocket is being affected. You got to really mean it. Every other group that has been a part of this network that has been a part of television. Mm -hmm. You say something about them. Don't it's say it. You say it something happens. about a particular oh. religious group. And yes. Crazy. Instantly, yes. you are fired. And yes. Far too often, you speak about black people, and there is no accountability, yeah. and nothing happens. So we don't that, even do it. We don't even do it. I've seen other races get attacked, yeah. and they got fired immediately. And in this particular show, this is rooted, deep rooted in black culture. Yeah. How dare you disrespect black culture and not be held accountable with the loss of income? All right. And so I want to reiterate for us and for the audience as well, the difference between racism and colorism, but also their importance, right? And so we know that racism is a system of economic, social, and political power, right, mm -hmm. that has elevated white people to the top of the hierarchy yeah. and has simultaneously pushed black folks to the bottom of that hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. Not by accident. And that colorism plays in tandem with racism, where even if we are all black, if you have more Eurocentric appearances, if you have lighter skin, you're still given greater status and opportunity in the larger society. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to say, too, is that when it comes to something like racism and colorism, we, most people know about racial inequalities, right? But in terms of colorism, there's also systemic inequality, discrimination, and oppression that darker-skinned people in our race also face. Mm -hmm. And so we can't address racism unless we also address colorism within our communities as well as yes. without our communities. Yes. So in the season finale, we see a moment of conflict between Spice and Carly. What the? Some people are perhaps through the lens of colorism, mm -hmm. because of their own colorist biases, mm -hmm. unfairly judging the way Spice acted on the season relative to lighter skinned castmates who might have also been, you know, aggressive to different people. And so do you all think that colorism played a big part in the way people are receiving and commenting about that particular episode? When I, cause I was reading the comments and when I was seeing different people saying, Spice just so mean, look at her, I don't know what got into her, it's just like, Okay, y'all doing this because she dark skin. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, bottom line. I've been aggressive. Other women have been aggressive. They weren't going in on me like that. They wasn't going in on other people like that. They, like, over going in on you. And I just, I believe because you're darker skin, complected. Absolutely. I think that so many times when we show express emotion or show anger, we are labeled as angry black women. And with that angry black women comes the threat of, oh my gosh, she is so aggressive. Many of you have seen lighter skinned women attack a whole cast of people. <laughs> I've seen a lighter skinned woman on this show attack another woman while she was down on the floor, kicking her in her crotch. All instances are wrong. But you cannot create this conversation around the fact that, oh, Spice is being so aggressive because she's dark-skinned. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I would say this is more aggressive than I've ever seen you. And I know that it comes on the heels of so many things that you've been through leading up to that moment. But that doesn't make me think you are an aggressive person. And I will not ever think that all dark-skinned women are angry, mean, and aggressive. I have been pretty aggressive this season. Um, again, I feel like it stems from a lot of things, mm -hmm. a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of anger inside. I'm going to leave this table to work on myself, to heal. I have had a traumatic experience as well. With Carly's situation, because that's what we end up ended with, um, it comes from a place of every time I love someone, they um, hurt me or betray me. And um, I think I sometimes make my anger get the best of me. And um, I just got to work on myself and take accountability um, for being angry because I'm so hurting. I don't want to blame it on colorism because I do know that a lot of people instill a lot of things on me because of my color. So I'm already guilty based on anything. Um, and so I take full accountability for being a little hurt and angry this season. But I'm going to work on that and work on myself. And I know I'm going to heal and um, take away a lot from everything mm -hmm. yeah. but um i'll work on myself yeah. i started my journey and um i know i'll overcome mm -hmm. yes. thank you so much for and your i'm courage. sorry that i cried but <laughs> connected, connected. <laughs> so how can we as a collective elevate beyond hurtful words beyond the fighting beyond the circumstances that have brought us here today what are your takeaways in terms of how we elevate and grow beyond this seek help we just got to be, health. we got to really, like, use our platforms like Yandy has been doing for years. When I talk about my testimony of how I had my daughter at 15, look how many followings it brought in. And I made, I made it out of that and made millions of dollars. And look how much success and look, young girls look up to me from just that story. What if I use my platform and talk about this stuff that's going on? That's what we got to do. Yeah. I think we also have to take an active role in, um, stopping the systems that promote racism and colorism. I think all of us have influence. All of us have some sort of privilege where we're celebrities and we have a voice and we have impact. But so often we stay silent on issues. We'll see things happen in the workplace. We won't speak on it. But we have the ability to create change and I think once we start in our houses, we start in our, then it goes to our neighborhoods, then from our neighborhoods, it goes to our communities, and eventually it'll hit the nation. But I think we have to take an active stance on breaking down these systems that promote yeah. racism. I agree. Yeah. Uh, as far as that. stepping up to the plate, holding people accountable, yeah. standing on your square. Because I ain't gonna lie, sometimes people are like, man, it wasn't that serious. Man, yes, it was. a whole other race or religious group. Mm -hmm or just a group of people who stand for one another, they're not hearing that bad. No. They're hearing what it, was. what it was. What it was and what and it did. Yeah. Thank you all so, so much for your insightful comments. I'm so glad I got to sit down with all of you. This has allowed us to start to unpack a larger conversation. Absolutely. Like you're saying, it has to be an ongoing conversation. I don't want anyone to think that the hour we're sitting here is gonna be the final conversation. Right. And so this is an opportunity for us to say, here's an instance of a much larger problem, Absolutely. right? And so when it comes to things like racism and colorism, they are so complex that it's not gonna be solved overnight, but it's important to start. Mm. Also starting to do the internal work of where am I biased? Mm. Where have I caused people harm? And am I willing to be held accountable for that if I actually care to start to create change, right? Whether it's using your platform or your resources or your skills or your talents to pour back into young black children and start to break the generational cycles, right? And so I hope that the folks who are watching are inspired by the cast that you are fans of to have conversations like this on your own, right? So in your spaces, in your workplaces, in your families, in your schools, bring some people to the table and start to open up this conversation because it can't just be a one-time thing. And so we hope that there are important lessons that people have taken away, but also more importantly, that you will continue to not only have the conversations, but to do the deep inner work to create change within yourself first yes. and then have that ripple out to your families in larger communities. Mm -hmm. 
I hate to part ways because y'all are so dope. Yeah. But you know, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming in this world. Yes. You feel Thank me. you so much. Oh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. you. See? Bye, y'all. Bye, bro. Yeah.